Hi, this is Duncan Ferguson. Uh, in this unit, we'll be talking about the hypothalamic pituitary thyroid axis. These relationships will be really crucial for us uh, as, as future clinicians to understand uh, in order to follow how diagnostic tests are designed and also how therapy uh, might be monitored. In this figure, we uh, illustrate the hypothalamic pituitary thyroid axis, and I also add what I call the extrathyroidal component. Uh, don't worry, I'm going to walk you through this uh, so that you can see uh, how this all fits together. The first thing to note is that the central nervous system uh, has, of course, input into the hypothalamus, and then we get to the hypothalamic pituitary thyroid part. Uh, the hypothalamus produces through the uh, portal system uh, and TRH, thyrotropin releasing hormone, uh, and then it stimulates the pituitary, the thyrotrope cells in the pituitary to produce thyrotropin or th thyroid stimulating hormone, TSH, and that has uh, effects on the thyroid gland that are both secretory, and those are going to ones that we'll focus on here, for instance, making T4. Uh, and then also, of course, to increase the glands um, hypertrophy, so that if we have a situation where TSH is elevated, it can hypertrophy, or more likely, when TSH is reduced, the thyroid uh, glands will atrophy. So let's focus uh, for now on T4 and what happens to it, although there is T3 secreted as well by the thyroid gland. Uh, I want to focus on T4 because the pituitary and the hypothalamus uh, basically are out there looking for primarily free T4 at both the hypothalamus and the pituitary as their uh, signal for negative feedback. And this, of course, is a, a servo system that sort of keeps the levels of thyroid hormone fairly uh, co uh, fairly consistent and don't fl they don't fluctuate quite a bit. Uh, remember that thyroid hormone is one of those uh, hormones that are lipophilic and in the previous unit we discussed that in dogs and cats we have 99.9% .9 that's bound to plasma binding proteins. So it's bound. So that means what we're talking about is free T4 is 0.1% but that fraction is extremely important clinically and uh, serves to provide this negative feedback. So those are the core elements of the hypothalamic, pituitary, and thyroid axis. Uh, as I said, we'll talk about deionation in peripheral tissue or extrathyroidal tissue uh, in a different unit. But just suffice to say that there is a control mechanism to activate to T3 or inactivate to reverse T3 within specific tissues. So what about um, the other stuff on this present on this slide? Uh, well, I'll start at the top right. Uh, basically, I think it's important for you to realize that thyroid hormone and its axis is is out there monitoring things like temperature and stress, and this is managed through the sympathetic nervous system, so that you could see that uh, stress will tend to have a suppressing effect on the axis, meaning TRH TSH may go down. Um, Likewise, for agents like glucocorticoids and some of it's mediated through the uh, corticotrophic releasing hormone and POMC, the, the um, mother peptide, if you will, of the adrenal um, corticotrophic hormone, uh, these will have negative effects on the, the CNS, the hypothalamus, and to some extent the pituitary. Uh, and then nutrient Availability, this is key because the thyroid axis is so constantly trying to balance the availability of nutrients with regard to its, stimul its stimulation so that it would drive uh, metabolism and oxygen consumption. So we see here a product made by the fat cells. So when, when animals have a uh, significant amount of fat stores, leptin is high, and uh, leptin can actually increase the, it has a positive effect on the axis. And then we have other things related to um, appetite. 
Uh, I, I neglected to mention, and I'll just go back now to this interaction between the hypothalamus and the pituitary. Uh, like with other systems, uh, dopamine is a negative impact, a negative uh, regulator of TSH secretion, and we see that also with prolactin and um, ACTH. And somatostatin, that's here, SRIH, is also has a negative impact. And TRH has what we call a short loop uh, connection back to its own secretion cells so that it's sort of a negative uh, feedback uh, upon the same types of cells. So this very com complex system, I want you to really focus in on the hypothalamic pituitary and thyroid part of it for now. We'll be talking about all the elements of this in more detail a little bit later. In this figure, let's focus first on the left-hand side of the axis. I want to show you the uh, elements or that we might measure as clinicians and to indicate how negative feedback uh, appears to a clinician. Uh, firstly, on the x-axis we have free T4, and you can see it's in a, on a linear scale here, uh, and then we have TSH. So that's the production of the pituitary TSH. And so what I want you to note is the blue area, let's just focus on free T4. So if the normal range ranges from 10 to 40, as T, as T4 falls, free T4 falls, you can see that it takes, it stays, uh, TSH stays fairly low until Right at, the end, right at the low end of the normal range, and then it starts to escalate dramatically. And so this is, a, if you want to think of it um, teleologically, this is TSH trying to anticipate the need for more thyroid hormone as thyroid hormone levels fall. Uh, and this connection is exponential. Um, so that means that it, uh, it rises very dramatically. And that's why TSH becomes very valuable to us in animals that have an elevation uh, as being diagnostic of hypothyroidism. Um, and so this can be translated to the right-hand side uh, where basically the only difference is uh, we have, a, again, we have a linear range for free T4, but we have a log of TSH for the y-axis, and that's just to show that it's exponential as well. So think about, keep in your mind uh, the left-hand side, the dramatic rise of TSH at the low end, and, and the very great sensitivity, uh, and we'll show you this later as well, of TSH to uh, even tiny increases in T4 or tiny decreases in T free T4 uh, in either direction. So now let's dig in a little bit deeper. Uh, this is the pituitary cell, okay, the one that's uh, called the thyrotrope, and the thyrotrope makes TSH, as you can see over here. Uh, this is TSH. And so what, and the reason I asked you to focus on free T4 is that free T4 is the dominant form of the unbound hormone um, in much larger quantity than free T3 is. Uh, but it gets taken up into the pituitary and then um, has a very rapid, can have a very rapid effect on an enzyme called deiodinase 2. And now we're going to talk about deiodinase 2 in the next um, unit as an important regulatory enzyme. But I want to focus on the pituitary now. This is just, think of it as a conversion enzyme that converts T4 to T3 inside the pituitary cell. And, and then it's this T3 that has a basically uh, an effect to down-regulate messenger RNA and, uh, and the secretion, uh, synthesis and secretion of TSH. And so that's why TSH falls. We won't worry about what I've shown here as a post negative effect of T4 on uh, post-translational regulation of deiodinase 2. Basically, it reduces it because that effect in the pituitary is quite small. So what we can basically conclude is that um, free T4 enters the pituocyte, the thyrotrope, 
and, and there's more or less a pass-through effect. Almost all of it, uh, or most of it, is deionated to T3, and it's T3 that has its negative effect on TSH through nuclear receptors. So in summary of the major points, um, free T4 uh, and free T3 provide the negative feedback uh, at the pituitary and the hypothalamic levels, and it does this by essentially the pituitary is out there looking for free T4 mostly um, and converts most of it, if not all of it, to T3. And it's that T3 inside the, the thyrotrope uh, pituitary cell that inhibits TSH secretion. Now, I'd like to actually show you some data from a, a study. Uh, and then the major points are in red. That is that when an animal is euthyroid, uh, which is what we see on the left-hand side. Um, you can see T4 is in the normal range, and TSH is in the normal range. Uh, there's not a lot of fluctuation over the day in either one. But when an animal becomes hypothyroid, which you see on the right-hand side, you can see TSH, as you'd expect, when they, lack of negative feedback makes TSH high. We start to get peaks. We start to see pulses of TSH. Uh, not so much in the T4 because it's very low, but this would suggest that there is the potential for pulsatile secretion of TSH, uh, particularly when an animal is severely hypothyroid. So let's take a look at a, a dog that has, has no thyroid. And this is an animal um, that had its thyroid removed. Uh, and so you can see what we're showing here on the uh, y-axis is TSH, and we're calling it canine TSH, and you can see if the red line here is the upper limit of normal for TSH, that TSH starts out very high. And well, when we give once a day a for sort of a standard dose, and these are the milligram per kilogram uh, dosages for T4, you give that animal T4 once a day, you can see that within two weeks, the TSH falls to undetectable levels. That's your negative feedback in action. It stays there until we stop the drug, and then it comes back up, and you can see it sort of comes to this level, keeps going up until we give it a dose, in this case half as much, and it goes kind of down again. Uh, and then we a little bit more, and it goes down again. So you can see the pituitary is quite capable of interpreting uh, administered T4 as well uh, and, uh, and suppressing its own function based on that negative feedback. It's important to us later when we talk about thyroid replacement therapy that this TS these TSH values stay low when we only give the drug once a day. And, and if you look at some of the clinical modules about uh, treatment of hypothyroidism, it's very simple. We give T4, and, and it's become more and more common for us to accept that it can be given once a day and not sort of according to how much it takes to keep the T4 up all the time because the pituitary is at, its role is integrating the available TSA, T4 uh, in the animal over the entire day, not just in a short period of time. Okay, in summary, um, circulating thyroid hormones are regulated uh, that is, by negative feedback inhibition, by the free T4 primarily, and somewhat the free T3, at both the hypothalamus and the pituitary. I want you to really focus in on the free T4, however. So, uh, this negative feedback is involved with the thyrocyte, the, that it makes TSH, uh, picking up the free T4 and monitoring free T4 and virtually converting it to T3, all of it, uh, by a type 2 5' deionase within the pituitary. And then it's the T3 inside the cell uh, that leads to diminished TSH and synthesis and secretion. Uh, there's also the possibility for this a more rapid system that impacts uh, deionase activity. We don't need to focus too much on it, but uh, let's just say at this point in time that this type of enzyme, uh, type 2 deionase, 
has its activity go down because it's increasingly degraded in the presence of, the, of T4. So it's sort of a buffering system. Uh, pulsatile TSH secretion is observed in hypothyroid but not euthyroid dogs. And plasma TSH can be used to monitor the appropriateness and adequacy of T4 replacement therapy.